This is your Galaxy Rangers read-along book. Every time you hear this chime, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now, if you are ready, we will start the story, Tortuna, Tortuna. the Outlaw, the outlaw planet. 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 Don't forget to turn the page every time you hear the chime. As the Galaxy Rangers sleek spaceship Phoenix landed in a cloud of dust on the desolate outlaw planet of Tortuna, Captain Zachary Fox and his rangers, Nico, Doc, and Goose, used a special onboard computer to examine a map of Tortuna City. Peering at the screen, Zach read the computer's coordinates. Tortuna City. Fifty clicks due south of here through Dead Man's Desert. Then he gave his group their last-minute instructions. We have to get into the city and find Gizi, the Pedulant. The Pedulants were strange-looking Tortunans with big ears and elephant-like noses. The evil Queen of the Crown had tortured them and made slaves of them, as she did other Tortunans. Why must we find Gizi? Asked Nico. Gizi has stolen the Queen's memory bird. We must get the bird and get away before she discovers it's missing. Memory bird? Why doesn't the Queen just use computer modules to store her data like everyone else does? Asked Doc. Nico explained. She does use computer modules for most of her information, but she stores her priceless data in those birds. And why are we in these disguises? Continued Doc. Zack answered. On this mission, we're going disguised in the clothing of the Zangwill smugglers, a group of inhabitants of Tortuna. This should help us enter the city without being questioned. An elevator on the underside of the ship lowered the Galaxy Rangers and their robotic horses down to the sandy surface of the planet. Let's mount up and head on out, said Zack. As he prepared to mount up, Doc looked at his reflection in the metal body of his horse and exclaimed, I sure do dig these wild duds. The Queen keeps a sizable force in Tortuna City. We can't just walk in as Galaxy Rangers, explained Zack. Doc was worried. We may not walk out as rangers either. Just being on Tortuna makes me feel as if my life force is being drained into one of the Queen's psycho crystals. The Galaxy Rangers knew they would have to be careful, even though they saw no sign of life as they made their way across the desert. The Queen had offered a reward to anyone capturing humans, and Gizi the Pedulant was so money hungry that he would happily hand the rangers over to her. Dead Man's Desert sure has some strange formations, said Doc, pointing to the landscape. Nico explained. All of this was suburbs once. Millions of Tortunas lived here. What happened to them? Asked Doc. Zack answered. The Queen came. But there's still something around, protested Doc, checking the CDU, the computer diagnostic unit, on his utility belt. I'm picking up several different life-form readings from over that ridge. These badlands are full of savages, explained Nico. And they're well-armed, added Goose. Hear that gunfire from the other side of the ridge? It's blaster fire. Advance to the ridge line, ordered Zack. Set your weapons on stun. The Galaxy Rangers galloped to the edge of a tall ridge. Looking down, they saw an alarming sight. A stagecoach was being attacked by bandits. Galaxy, Galaxy Rangers! Rangers ho! Shouted Zack. And the Galaxy Rangers bravely charged into battle, guns blasting. It didn't take them long to overpower the bandits and lead them along the trail. Once Goose had jumped onto the horses and brought the stagecoach to a stop, Zack opened the door at the top and jumped down inside. There, huddled together, was a group of frightened creatures who lived on Tortuna. They were the peace-loving Gherkins, who were fugitives from the Queen. The Gherkins were being helped to flee by the two stagecoach drivers, who were pedulants. As Zack helped the Gherkins out of the stagecoach, one of the pedulants mistook the rangers for Zangwills, out to capture the Gherkins. Huh? All right, Zangwills, drop your weapons! shouted the pedulant Bullnub, as he and his partner drew their guns. Goose quickly opened fire and blasted their weapons from their hands. Wow! Wild Zangwill bilge beast! cried Umfki, the other pedulant. I've heard that the Queen tortures pedulant smugglers by wringing their noses, threatened Goose. Oh, don't 
they even say such things? Screamed the petulant Umpke, grabbing onto his long trunk-like nose. Zack tried to explain. We're not Zangwills. We're looking for another petulant by the name of Geezy. That was a name Bullnub knew. Geezy? By the great trunk, there's a petulant to make us all proud. A slippery wheeler dealer he is. <laughs> Where can he be found? Asked Nico. Try the Hot Stars Bar and Grill on Doom Street in the Great Dome! Answered Umpke. So the Galaxy Rangers rode on toward Tortuna City. They were stopped by crown agents who guarded the entrance to the city. But a bribe of 600 crowns to the sergeant permitted the disguised rangers to enter the domed city. Overhead, the sky was filled with spy droids, small flying satellites through which the Queen monitored the whole city. They were like her flying eyes and ears. The Galaxy Rangers quickly moved through the city toward Doom Street, looking for Geezy the Pedulant. Soon they arrived at the Hot Stars Bar and Grill. Geezy was there, just as they had been told, seated at a table with a covered bird cage in front of him. Before the Galaxy Rangers could talk to Geezy, a group of the Queen's troops burst in and tried to grab the bird away. After a short scuffle with the troops, the Rangers helped Geezy escape. Come on, Geezy. You're coming with us, ordered Zack. Once they were safely out on the street and away from the troops, Nico took the bird from Geezy. Let's see this bird. Give me back my memory bird, screamed Geezy. Huh? You Zangwills will never get away with robbing a loyal Pedulant! Geezy, we're not Zangwills, explained Zack, pulling down his mask. We're the Galaxy Rangers. Galaxy Rangers? Yeah! Don't say such dreadful words! Cried Geezy. This is Tortuna City, a nest of spies. You never know who or what might be listening to you! Geezy, we're prepared to offer you 500 crowns for the memory bird said Zack. The greedy Pedulant quickly agreed. There's the bird in her hand, said Geezy, pointing to Nico. Now give me my crown. When Nico removed the cover from the bird cage, they recognized Bubblehead, the silly memory bird. Bubblehead announced, Hello, manufacturer's warning. I am not an edible bird. Do not fall, bend, spindle, fry, or roast. Ha! Keep quiet, shouted Geezy. You are a complete dip switch, said Bubblehead. This bird looks pretty brainless, Nico decided. This interested Doc. Let me study this bird. But before Doc could do anything, three of the Queen's crown agents sneaked up behind the rangers. Nobody moves, shouted one agent as he ripped away part of Doc's disguise, revealing his gold galaxy ranger badge. Doc was angry. Hey, go easy on the threads, my man. Silence, Galaxy Ranger, shouted the Queen's agent. I wonder what that sneaky old pedulant is doing with a bunch of Galaxy Rangers and the Queen's missing memory bird. What's the problem, officers? Asked Zack. Get your hands up, ordered the Crown agent. We are taking you in for a routine torture. Not this time, answered Goose, as he and the other Galaxy Rangers opened fire on the Queen's evil troops. In the confusion, Geezy slipped away unnoticed, leaving the birdcage behind. Doc picked it up and asked, Are you the Queen's memory bird? Hi, well, I ain't the Easter Rabbit, answered the wacky bird. Hi, as a matter of fact, I am one of many birds from the Royal Palace. Professor Bubblehead to you. You mean there's another bird? Asked Zack. Aye, uh, yes, and Geezy has it! Exclaimed Bubblehead. The Galaxy Rangers had little choice but to trust Bubblehead to lead them to Geezy and the real memory bird. Soon Bubblehead was leading them into a dark house. This is the place, I'm telling you. It's really scary, kids. <laughs> Joked the bird. Are there any signs of life here? Asked Zack. Using a special sensor, 
Nico picked up a reading. I've got something down there. And she pointed to a flight of stairs. The Galaxy Rangers carefully made their way down and into a dark hallway. When suddenly Zack stopped. I hear something, he said as he aimed the beam of his flashlight into a dark corner. There stood a group of frightened gherkins. Oh, do not harm us! Pleaded oh, one gherkin. We are the last survivors of our race. The queen has destroyed our world. How did you get here? Asked Goose. The pendulums brought us, but who are you? You are not really Zangwills, even though you dress like them. Said another gherkin. We are the Galaxy Rangers. Announced Goose. Ah, oh, the Galaxy Rangers. Said the gherkin with relief. You humans are fugitives too from the Queen Cycle Crypt. Come, take shelter with us. You'll be safe here. Thanks for the offer, but we're looking for Geezy. Answered Zack. The Gherkins looked alarmed. You must not harm him. He's our only way out. Oh, we won't necessarily do him any harm. Zack assured them. The Gherkin leader believed Zack, and he silently pointed toward a curtain on the wall. Zack tiptoed to the curtain and opened it. Inside were Geezy and a golden robotic bird. This was the Queen's memory bird that the Galaxy Rangers were seeking. Inside its protective cage, the memory bird screeched in anger. For this, my old pendulant, you will suffer most horribly. You shall be disintegrated, exterminated, annihilated, eviscerated. You will be mashed potatoes. What? You are driving me crazy, stupid bird! Squealed Geezy. At that moment, the Galaxy Rangers entered the room and came face to face with Geezy and the bird. We meet again, Geezy. Announced Zack. Wait, that's not what you think. Protested the pedulant. I knew you'd track me here. This is the bird you want. And he held up the real memory bird. I don't know if I can trust you, said Zack. You have to. There's no time to lose, bird. We must get these gherkins off this planet. The golden bird shrieked at them. Your life forces will be drained into psycho crystals. Tiny drummers will pound upon your skulls. So that's the memory bird we're after, commented Doc. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Squawked Bubblehead, dancing around his cage. Charming little fellow, isn't he? Joked Doc. Goose didn't think so. When we get back to Beta Headquarters, how is Q-Ball, the head of tech support, going to get any information about the Queen out of that bird? Doc had the answer to that. Hey, leave that to the computer department, Mr. Muscle Master. We'll sort out its chips and dump the contents in no time. Now the Queen's memory bird was angrier than ever, and it threatened. You will suffer electronic pain inducement for seven weeks. Can we at least turn off that noise? Pleaded Goose. Please! Squealed Geezy. The doctor will operate. <coughs> said Doc as he approached the shrieking memory bird and flashed a beam from his CDU, his computer diagnostic unit, at the bird. The bird froze. Doc opened the cage and took the robotic bird in his hand. Suddenly, a burst of electrical power charged through the robot bird and into Doc. Whoa! With a cry of pain, he released the bird. Flapping its mechanical wings, the memory bird soared away. No! Stop that bird or we're all dead pendulums! Screamed Geezy. Please, we must get the gherkins to my ship at once! Leading the way, Geezy ran through the tunnel towards an elevator, followed by the Galaxy Rangers and the Gherkins. A dozen daring pendulums built this tunnel. We have saved many refugees like these poor Gherkins. Geezy explained. One of the Gherkins was worried. But with the memory bird back with her, the Queen will know where to look for our tunnel. The memory bird will have told her everything. Including the fact that the Galaxy Rangers are here! Shouted Nico. <coughs> Including just that fact, my dear! Came a voice from the elevator as the door opened. It was a slaver lord, backed up by a platoon of crown agents. She stood right before the Galaxy Rangers, 
her cold eyes gleaming in the dark corridor as she screamed, Seize them! In the next instant, shots rang out. The battle had begun. An energy blast from Zack's advanced bionic arm sent a large group of crown agents running for cover and permitted the rangers and their group to head out towards the ship. While Nico and Zack continued fighting off more attacking crown agents, Goose and Doc charged through the doors of the Queen's control room. With guns blazing, they overpowered the crown agents and seized the control room. Everyone out! shouted Goose. An army of crown agents coming out of the dome! shouted Doc, looking at the video screen. We need a little of the doctor's magic, exclaimed Goose. Using one of his special powers, Doc unleashed Pathfinder from the CDU on his belt and ordered the computer program... Pathfinder, up and at him. Take over the defense program. In an instant, Pathfinder was controlling the weapon system, and Goose announced... Controls are responding, but we'll need something extra to buy us a little time. Quickly, Doc began probing the computer terminal. The flashing lights glowed in his eyes as he announced, The doctor will operate. How about we blow the fuel dumps? Go to it, Doc, while I hone the old shooting skills. And Goose began firing round after round of energy bolts down onto the crown agents far below. But Goose knew he couldn't hold them off forever. Uh, Doc, hurry it up! He shouted. Okay, I'm doing it. In the next instant, the ground began to rumble as one by one the fuel dumps outside the dome began exploding. Doc and Goose left the control room and rejoined the Galaxy Rangers. With guns blazing, they fought their way through the Crown Agents toward their horses. Under the Rangers' protective fire, Yeezy led the Gherkins on board his ship. And an instant later, they had blasted off to safety. A few short minutes later, the Galaxy Rangers lifted off in Phoenix and rocketed away from Tortuna back into deep space. As Geezy's strange and lovable face appeared on the Phoenix's video monitor, Zack radioed, Bye, Geezy, and take care of those gherkins. Huh? Farewell, Galaxy Rangers. We will spread the news of your courage far and wide, declared the brave Pedulant. Meanwhile, Doc was busy examining Bubblehead, the goofy memory bird, when the bird piped up. Guess what, Doc? What? I know the secret of the universe. Wow. What is it? I can't tell you. It's a secret. <laughs> this is one nutty bird. Oh, just a happy bubble head. <laughs> the Galaxy Rangers' laughter echoed through Phoenix as they rocketed through the starry blackness of space towards Beta Mountain. It felt good to be going home.